UFC 283 just finished, and there's a lot to talk about. We have, you know, Jamal Hill coming out with a, with a masterful performance. Brandon Moreno finally closing that trilogy. You know, Gilbert Burns dominating so much more. And, uh, you know, I want to talk about some of the highlights of the card. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a little more of these, like, raw edited style videos. So if you guys enjoy this, please leave a like and all of that. So, yeah, let's get into this. So first, before we get into anything, I want to talk about the prelim headliner. It was supposed to be Shogun's retirement fight. Obviously, Shogun Rua, you know, a legend in the sport. You know, you know, he fought the likes of John Jones, defeated Leota Machida, became the UFC light heavyweight champion, had a phenomenal legacy. And, you know, you would think, yeah, you know what? Let me uh, let me close his legacy, you know, on a, on a beautiful, you know, on a high note. So, you know, but, but, but we're going to watch, you know, real quick. I'm going to put on just... You know, just just a little bit of his a uh, little bit of the ending of his retirement fight. So as you can see, as you guys don't know, well, if you guys don't know, I mean to say, Shogun Rui obviously got knocked out in the first round by this man. What, what was his name again? By Ihor Potiera. I believe this was his debut. Let's, let's just watch. You know, so obviously Herb Dean calls off the fight. Shogun obviously was very hurt. And now let's see. Let's see. Oh, oh. oh. What, what, what was he just doing there? I just think it's a little bit ridiculous that Ihor would be dancing for uh, beating an old man, you know, just, you know, on his retirement fight and no respect in the post fight interview. No shout out to Shogun. No, hey, thank you for, you know, it was an auto share. No respect. This guy deserves zero respect and he's, you know, rightfully so getting shitted on by MMA Twitter and the MMA community. This guy, I, I really hope he loses his next fight because that was just classless. You, you know, I would understand, okay, you know what, a guy that's been talking shit to you, you know, this is your UFC championship, you beat, like, on your debut, you probably got, like, the easiest matchup, dude, like, how about you calm, calm down, and I seriously hope this guy gets humbled, because I just don't tolerate that. As for the rest of the prelims, I just want to touch on it, obviously some crazy highlights, I mean, Terrence McKinney getting knocked out cold, very painful to watch as a fan, uh, Jelton Almeida once again doing his thing, dominating like always, and, you know, obviously, the prelims were uh, stacked maybe in the prelims were maybe even better than the pay-per-view itself but we get to the pay-per-view section highlights you know let me just talk about obviously the elephant in the room Glover Teixeira Jamal Hill Jamal Hill becoming the first ever UFC champion that came off of uh, Dana White's contender series a lot of predictions were made oh you know Glover was going to take down Jamal you know dominate him from there submit him or Jamal's gonna hit Glover with a shot knock him out and get the win that way a lot of was a lot of a lot of speculation was made right but I don't think anybody expected for Jamal Hill, in my opinion, to put a master... I mean, you know, Glover, yes, he lost to Yuri, but he, as close to a champion as you're going to get in light heavyweight, because he was, like, seconds away from beating Yuri Prohaska, and just the fact that he was just... He just fuck like... Jamal looked like he was in another like world and like I said in my prediction Jamal Hill did have a short camp I mean Yuri I mean a Glover rather was coming off of that training camp to train for Yuri right at least he had that going for him obviously he did I guess I assume stop maybe put on some weight but really like there was only like a two-week window that he knew he wasn't fighting for a title the performance that Jamal Hill put on was absolutely amazing I mean, first of all I thought he came in with the game plan of those head kicks they were not game plans like that he said he came up with that and and mid fight and to me that just shows such like it shows his fight IQ and I think that's one of them the fight he won him the fight by you know out striking Glover being a little more savvy coming in he did say he had the game plan of switching up the attacks switching stances confusing Glover and he did that well he one of his main weapons was the body kick he used it all around one which later set up that head kick that he kept hitting Glover to share with almost knocked him out with I mean Glover was getting battered with those head kicks he was outboxing and he also I like that he would do he would pull out the jab and try to get Glover to think he was throwing the right hand keep fading that right hand but then come up with an uppercut which he called Glover with a few times especially on the fence but Glover's Glover's toughness man he it was tough to watch it was it reminded me of the Jessica Andrade fight which we're going to get into in a little bit but I thought Glover would get the takedown a lot easier you know that was one of the things that I think a lot of people expected including Glover himself I think he was a little shocked that the takedowns weren't there and to be fair we never really saw a guy like Jamal face a wrestler yet right and and we, yes he did get taken out by Tiago Santos but what a lot of people don't realize is sometimes a striker will be able to take you down a little bit more because you're not expecting that right um for me he was expecting it and with Tiago Santos he obviously was expecting more of a striking match and he did well he 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 got up a lot of the times there was never a point where I don't believe that there was a point where Jamal like held him down I mean where uh, rather Glover held him down and Jamal wasn't able to get up for the most part he was able to get up 
and yeah so that that's that's that there great main event definitely fight of the night i think a one fight of the night uh yeah i did one fight of the night i saw and it was a good fight overall so for the next fight i want to talk about brandon moreno davis and figueredo we were going into this with the fourth fight i have a video breaking down the trilogy you know if that one does a little bit better if people are asking for it maybe i'll do another video closing out the quadrilogy breaking down the fourth fight the first ever fourth fight in ufc history and for the most part i had said look every fight that they've had has been a banger this fight was a little lackluster let's be honest brandon moreno i said in my breakdown what he should do is go to the wrestling fatigue davis and figueredo that way uh, because of the weight cut and then in the later rounds really put it on with the striking that's what it looked like he was doing i mean he took him down in the first like 20 seconds or something like that something that brandon moreno didn't do throughout any of the three fights definitely took davis and figueredo by surprise he had that guillotine not really close at any point like maybe you could say in like round three it was close that time um that's really the only close one but when he first took him down it wasn't very close it, was, the, the, it wasn't very tight at all he was on the side and davison was just blowing out his arms brandon moreno basically kind of stalled the position i mean he he didn't really he kind of underwhelmed me with the ground and pound i thought maybe he should use a little more ground and pound i think figueredo was arguably doing more damage to uh to brandon moreno obviously i don't think and and the ground i mean i don't think this won him the round of course i had a 3-0 moreno uh maybe you can make an argument that figueredo won the second round but because um both those takedowns really were just him with submission attempts and this stand up was really close right but obviously the fight got stopped because of a doctor stoppage um and i was a little disappointed because look i wanted a little more certainty and look brandon moreno was most likely going to win those fourth and fifth rounds and at the end of the day it was a punch started that i've closing in on uh davidson figueredo it was a legal punch i wanted a little more certainty i was hoping to have maybe a little more of a dominant performance even a 50 45 for brandon moreno so we could forever close this trilogy it was heading towards that way in my opinion i even said in my breakdown i wouldn't be surprised to see a more dominant performance from brandon and Moreno. I was pretty confident going into it um, before I watched it saying, yeah, I think Brandon Moreno is going to win. I was a little more iffy on throughout the week, but I, th I thought, you know, after breaking it down heavily, I thought Moreno had this in the bag and he did. I mean, it was pretty dominant from beginning to end he said he was a little more emotional in the last fight which caused the performance personally i think it was those calf kicks i don't think it was emotion at all i think it was just those calf kicks that moreno that figueredo was just throwing at moreno i mean he was just chomping at the leg and uh in this one he didn't do that he abandoned it he didn't try to mask it and that was his first error from there i just think the, the grappling i think it slowed down figueredo and even just forcing him to grapple defending the takedowns this and that i think it had definitely helped brandon moreno and that's why i think he overall won uh i mean he did win by the eye eye shutting but i think he would have gotten a finish in my opinion but maybe maybe 50 45 i think a finish might be a stretch but definitely 50 45 i don't think figueredo was going anywhere i was hoping to get a little more clarity a little more assurance but the reason is because i'm not saying for me i think brandon moreno i definitely found who's better right through through this quadrilogy and I'm just afraid that fans are just going to be like, oh, the doctor stopped it. It wasn't really a real stoppage. That's just my fear. And I'd uh, rather have it been more conclusive for fans and so we could just end this argument. But it seems like Figueredo is going up to Bantamweight. That's it. I would really like to see him against like a top top five guy. Just throw him in there. I mean, there's so many good matchups. Dominic Cruz isn't matched up. I don't know if you put him against him, but, you know, um, Dominic Cruz is coming off of a loss. But, um you know that wouldn't be a bad one you could put him against umar namaga madoff he hasn't fight, he doesn't have a fight book he wants to fight in march seems a little soon for uh figueredo but who knows um a lot of the bantam weights are booked right now but definitely you gotta throw him in a top five you don't just give him a non-rank guy or you know i'm maybe a song Dong. i think song Dong has a book fight a fight booked rather a book fight a fight booked against ricky simone but that would have been a good one there's a lot of good matchups in bantamweight let's be real bantamweight is stacked we could see davison against most of those guys and be hyped for it so i'm excited for that move now to touch on the other fights gilbert burns dominant performance thought gilbert burns was going to win uh i regret i don't think i predict oh no i think i did say submission right in the video um i thought he was going to submit him pretty easy brought him to the ground like i said gilbert is incredibly strong um but i'll be honest before the fight started i was a little like maybe magni can get this i was a little less confident in that gilbert burns prediction but <laughs> gilbert proved me wrong he just dominated and got that arm triangle did it perfectly um set it up with the ground and pound and immediately jumped on it once he made a mistake and then we get to the jessica andrade versus lauren murphy fight now jessica andrade underrated in my opinion 
definitely underrated because like like she has fought in every single women's weight division. She's beaten the Rose Nami Yunus, right? She's fought Jung Wei Lee. Obviously Jung Wei Lee knocked her out in the first round, but she had a close another close fight against Rose that I, some people do say she won. I don't think that. I think Rose won, but fought at 135. She's fought she had that like I said submission of the year last year. She is a girl that is crazy, pushes the pace, you know, is is definitely a volume type fighter. She's calling for a rematch against Jung Wei Lee in Brazil, which would be interesting because look Andrade did go to China, right? When 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 she was the champ, makes sense for maybe Zhang Weili to go. Obviously, Zhang Weili in the past this has problems with the crowd, like rock, like shaking her, making her nervous. So it would be interesting to see how that would play out. Um, I think Zhang Weili has gotten a little bit better at that, and has has gotten a little more love. Obviously, not going to get love in Brazil, but you know, I think I think overall she's getting more love. So that that's good too. Obviously, Johnny Walker, I predicted it KO. I was like, I could see a KO. Thought it was going to be a little more of a TKO, maybe maybe closer to that Claudio Puelas, um, Dan Hooker fight, kind of something like that. But it was more conclusive than that first round knockout. Good on Johnny Walker. Glad he's in the win column. Like I said, uh, he's a guy that I really liked, especially back then when he was winning. And now that he's winning again, it makes me hype. Maybe this is a second run. He does have a lot of, you know, question marks when it comes to his chin. I mean, guys like Jan Blahovich will just take advantage of that. You know, maybe him, him and Yuri. Um, I don't know, Yuri gets hit a lot. I mean, I think Yuri would win. I, I don't mean to say make it sound like I don't know. I just saw the MMA guru do a video about, about him getting knocked out five times in a fight. I don't know if that has something to do with why his chin is so questionable nowadays. I'm getting off on a tangent, but I'm excited he has now back-to-back -back wins. Maybe you see him fight uh, a guy a little bit higher, you know? We were talking about, you know, when he lost to Corey Anderson. If he would have beat Corey Anderson, he would have fought John Jones. Crazy enough. Um, I'm hoping that maybe this is like a second coming. Obviously now that Jamal Hill is a champ, which just feels crazy to say. I, I was super confident in that Glover pick. I really thought that Glover should have been like a minus 300 uh, favorite or minus 400 favorite. was really shocked that Glover was not able to dominate Jamal Hill, but Johnny Walker, I'm super excited to see his future. I hope he gets a top ranked guy and I hope he makes another title run because he's an exciting fighter. He, his knockouts are crazy. He has power. He's a really good striker. Well, he, I wouldn't say he's a really good striker. He's just a really entertaining striker. Like he he does get hit here now and then, but and obviously the chin questionable, you know. Um, but like I said, I'm excited to see him fight. And overall, the full card was really good. A really good opening card for the year. I uh, hope this sets the tone for all the cards of the year. And yeah, so let me know what you guys think. What was your favorite part of the uh, of the whole? Um, of the whole card of the you know what do you guys think of the crowd I know a lot of people are talking about the crowd being disrespectful what are you gonna do it's Brazil like you know if you go to China they're gonna be rooting for the the, the China people America is really the only non -pa like I feel like in America it's not really promoted this like patriotic idea not to get like political or anything like that but you know when you look at other countries like Brazil China you know it is they're extremely for their people and that's just that I don't know what it is you know I'm a guy that if it's someone from New York I'll be rooting for them because I'm from New York obviously but I'm not so much for America. I'm not going to be chanting USA at UFC events. But like I said, let me know what you guys think uh, in the comment section below about the crowd, about the fights. What was your favorite fight, performance of the night? You know, let me know all of that in the comment section below. I'll make sure to answer them and we could talk about it. So let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next one.